we all know that percutaneous nephrolithotomy is the most common procedure performed for treating renal stones which are of larger size of course most of the pcnls either supine or prone pcnl were performed using fluoroscopic guidance ultrasound guided pcnl has also been described but the use of ultrasound is not so common when compared to fluoroscopic guidance but there are certain situations where intraoperative ultrasound is an invaluable adjunct while performing pcnl this video is depicting one such situation where without intraoperative ultrasound we could not have cleared the stone in this given case a 43 year old female presented with right flank pain which was intermittent for the past few months of course her serum creatinine is normal on evaluation she had right sided hydronephrosis particularly there was asymmetrical hydronephrosis in the form of dilatation of the superior calyx with a renal stone of size 2.5 cm she underwent right sided dejet stenting at some other hospital and she also had past history of open pyelolithotomy done on evaluation uh, an ivp was done you can see the renal stone here with the digest and in situ and if you go through the subsequent films of the ivp you can clearly see a stone of size around 2 cm which was actually located impacted in the infundibulum of the superior calyx as shown by the arrow here you can see the stone there which was located in the infundibulum of superior calyx and the calyx above it is dilated the stent is actually below and these are the ct films nc ct films where you can see the hydronephrosis and also the renal calculus so the patient was planned for right sided mini pcnl and this is the intraoperative image as the procedure started Uh, the first step is doing rgp you can see uh, when we were injecting the contrast actually the superior calyx was not at all opacifying you can see the opacification of the lower calyx however because of that impacted stone in the infundibulum the superior calyx was not opacified even we tried doing air pyelogram but with that also the su the uh, superior calyx was not delineated so there is no other way in such situation than to use an ultrasound uh, using intraoperative ultrasound you can see the superior calyx which was dilated and the stone which is just lying below it so first we assess the ultrasound so how to put the probe so always the probe is put in the axis of the kidney so this is the way how you have to hold the probe like this now you can see the needle goes there down and that is seen on the right side of the uh, monitor on the ultrasound screen so there is a marker over here where you can pass the needle through this side so if you have a puncture guide also it can be used uh, as well so now you can see on the screen the right side there is movement so that is the site where the needle will start coming up so now i am again assessing the ultrasound using ultrasound the site of entry and then when once i fix the ultrasound probe like this you can move the probe a little bit cranially so that the dilated calyx come into the center of the screen so that is what the maneuver which i have shown here now now i am just keeping the dilated calyx in the center of the ultrasound screen then the puncture needle is taken this is a two part puncture needle now slowly the needle is advanced now you can see the movement on the screen now the needle is entering into the calyx you can see the tip of the needle there see it is an echo tip needle so it is clearly seen there when once the needle enters the calyx then the position in the in the calyx is confirmed by free flow of saline so i always ask my assistant to pull the stylet now he is taking out the stylet now you can see free flow of urine coming over there so this confirms the position in the calyx 
so you can reconfirm the same side by injecting contrast now the next step that is what i am doing here you see the location of the needle it is actually oblique so i generally don't use this track for dilatation now i am just wanting the calyx to be opacified so that i can puncture properly using fluoroscopy guidance see how the ultrasound has helped us here see by putting the contrast you can now clearly see the obstructed calyx with the stone in the infundibular now when once the ultrasound has helped us like this now the next step is now you can see the syringe which is the contrast there which was connected to the needle now using bullseye technique you can see the needle with an artery there the superior calyx is punctured i am aligning the puncture needle in zero degree position and for assessing the depth whenever you are puncturing the superior calyx you have to move the cm either in cephalopodal or reverse 30 direction see here i have done the reverse 30 direction cm movement to assess the depth and when once since there is the whether the saline is coming i have to pass saline through the previously punctured ultrasound guided punctured needle using that i injected saline to see the free flow of saline because i can't use the ureter catheter in this case because there is infundibulum is blocked now the guide wire is passed into the calyx see adequate coiling of the guide wire in the superior calyx is done and then the next or rest of the steps are uh, routine uh, and i specifically punctured separately and i didn't use the previous ultrasound needle because that is oblique there so then you can see the guide wire there coiled in the superior calyx now i am giving a skin incision since i have planned mini pcnl a small incision was given now that it is uh, dilatation is done you can see again i am injecting saline to see whether free flow of saline is coming out of the dilator that confirms my position of the dilator now you can see the elkan scanner there saline is coming freely now i have dilated it to 17.5 french and i use mipm system mini perf for doing this case you can see the calyx with the coiled guide wire in it and there you can see the infundibulum which is getting completely impacted with the stone there so this this puncture can this puncture can help me in uh, doing laser properly now you see mm -hmm. using laser i am ablating the stone now so the rest of the processes are straight forward so this is the stone which is impacted in the infundibulum so using holmium laser in the dusting mode the stone is completely dusted you see these are the terminal part you can see the completely stone has been ablated and these are few fragments which were left which were later on cleared using heady currents of the saline so now i'm just showing the uh, area of the impaction so that has been completely cleared and this is a final picture after clearing the stone coming to the few learning points which we have learned by seeing this case renal stones sometimes can get impacted in the infundibulum of a calyx so in such a situation opacification of the desired calyx while doing rgp might not be possible because of the impacted stone hence in such cases intraoperative ultrasound definitely helps it is an invaluable adjunct in such type of situations ultrasound guided puncturing of the obstructed calyx can be easily done in such situation to circumvent the problem thank you